Okay, let's try another example for projectile motion. Now this time they make it a little bit harder on us in that they don't give an angle, they give only the slope triangle. Now I personally like slope triangle better than angles, but everybody has their own preference. So we know initially that the projectiles fire with a velocity of 150 meters per second. And we want to figure out the horizontal distance it travels and the time in the air. Now how are you going to proceed? Well, hmm. Now, do not get confused by what I said on the last example, that oh, it's going to have the same velocity coming up as it comes down. We do know what the velocity is when it hits this point right here. That will be the same. But once it goes below that, the velocity is going to have increased. It'll be greater. Okay. So, how are you going to proceed? I would break things into components. I would write down your kinematic equation for projectile motion and then see what pops out. Okay, see what pops out. I will say this, if you run into absolutely a horrendous algebra, you are missing some sort of simplifying assumption. Okay, now that means that there was an easier way to solve the equations, you could have done it in a different direction, um, or you've missed a simplifying assumption. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to try this out, and we'll come back and do it together. So, three, two, one. Okay, you've paused it, you're back, Let's walk through this problem. Well, the best thing to do in this case is you're gonna to have to establish a fixed XY coordinate system. You can either do it at the ground or you can do it at the little cannon. But you have to choose one before you can solve the problem. And be consistent, don't switch midway. Okay, so what do we know? Well, hmm. We're gonna put our coordinate system at point A. And we want to figure out how far it is to point B. We run into an issue here. We don't actually know what that is. Um, we don't know how long it's in the air. If we did, we would be able to solve it. So if we simplify as much as we can, all we can get is that this distance r is going to be equal to 120, that's the x component of the velocity, times however much time it's in the air. Now let's look at other questions. Maybe our vertical equations can help us. Well, we know what the distance is between YB and YA. And at YB, we're going to consider that to be negative 150 million meters because our positive Y direction is shown to be up. Okay, so if we know what it is there and we know the initial velocity, it looks like we can probably solve this. If you look right here, all we're missing is time. We know acceleration, we know initial velocity, we know how far it goes. So with this, we should be able to solve the time. Now what you're going to see very quickly here is that it's going to have two solutions. It's going to have two solutions and only one of those will hopefully make sense. Okay, so if we solve for TAB, we can get 19.89 seconds. If we plugged it in, that means that the ball went 2,387 meters. Now, what I would like for you to do right now is tell me what the second route would have been. There's always two routes to this. And if you remember, I'll give you a couple of points extra credit in class. So, if you're watching this video, tell me what the second route of this would have been um, for TAB. Okay? And let me know in class. Well, that's it for this. We really didn't have to do too much craziness. We just had to realize that this distance was what was going to help us solve this problem. Because YB minus YA was negative 150. And then from there, everything was easy peasy. So I hope this helps you. If not, we've got a couple more example problems to try out, and hopefully those will help really drive this home. I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.